You know, if you really think about it, Africa isn't so bad. In fact, I think it's kind of starting to grow on me. I mean, sure, they might have military installed leaders, insane motor traffic, or an overinflated economy, but I think if you break it down and look past. Oh. Yeah. They probably wouldn't even bite you if they landed on you, but you would freak out. So, I don't know. Comparison for size, he can't get me. He's on the other side of the web. Unless he moves like lightning and comes over the top. <laughs> Please let that not be the case. <laughs> so, my hand next to this guy. I mean, he's almost as big as my hand. Not quite. That leg span. Mm-hmm. Guess where I'm not going to be hanging out to read books. Uh, yeah, and guess what's above us everywhere in the tree. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so with that nightmare burned into our minds, it was then time for lunch. This is the hangout. This is about a block away from where we're staying, just over that way. And they have like a little food court that's all outdoors here and a little play place for kids. It's really cute. The play place here is uh, definitely a lot better than the ones back in America that's all plastic and cheapy and overly safe. Because these are built out of wood and steel. Uh, the food here is really good. Um, the smoothies and milkshakes especially are really, really nice. Um, they have coffee, they have Japanese food, Chinese food, ice cream. Um, I'm not sure what that one sells. Mexican food is over there too. The whole little square here is shipping containers with holes cut out for windows. So it's very rustic. With lunch out of the way, we decided to visit the orphanage as they had a pretty big job to do today. So we made it here yet again to UOCC. Today, uh, Jennifer and Daniel have both gone to Kampala to do some errands and they're gonna be picking up the second team coming in this weekend. Right now, the old building that Daniel Kanyu currently lives in is now going to get demolished. So we get the privilege of swinging the hammer today and uh, we're gonna have some fun destroying things. This is also the first building, the original building on this property. All this stuff up here is new. So the one that we're gonna be demolishing is like the original part of this orphanage. So it's kind of a big moment. Our friend Patrick was kind enough to give us a walkthrough and explain why this building needed to be torn down. Yes, they are good houses. Unfortunately, since the, it is a soil which was used, plastering, the plastering, when they were still new, worked. But as time went on, well, the, the, the plaster went on being what? Uh, uh, giving space from the bricks. Le yeah. Okay. Yes, living it. And if I can give you an example, you can see. Yeah. This is totally weak. Yeah. It shows you the mixture which was used was generally weak. That's why you see you can just use your hand in what? And removing off the, the plaster. Yeah. You see? Yeah, that's really bad. Yes. So, it is a wiki house, yeah. We also got to see the inside of the house. We were told that when it rains, you could hear the walls crumbling. Because of that, it's become increasingly concerning for the safety of the orphanage. Although, it's implied that safety in Africa would seem to be more of a suggestion. And if you've never seen an African demolition, well, let's just say you're in for a treat. So there was some discussion as to how long it would take to demolish this building. Uh, the ladies thought it would take a few days with some hammers to do it. Um, but my firefighting experience told me that this would probably go by pretty quickly. And with three sledgehammers and a few smaller hammers, uh, we knocked it out in a few hours. 
Uh, and actually, we knocked out a little more than we intended. Just a little. Just a little. You, you really could see how, just how bad the construction of that house was. It was literally just falling apart, and you could just see him poking with a stick, and it was just crumbling to pieces. So I really do see why that building really had to come down. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what they decide to put up in this place. But now that the building's down, it is time for uh, cleanup. Mass cleanup. Mass cleanup. This is a lot. Oh. Andrew, what do you think of that? <laughs> Probably one of the most thrilling experiences I've had in a long, long, long time. <laughs> With the house finally demolished, we spent the rest of the evening helping tidying things up. Over the next few days, trucks would come in and clear out the rubble and prep the site for whatever project lied ahead. Today we're back here at the UOCC Orphanage. It's the weekend and that means most of the kids are out of school. It also means that it's laundry day. But it also means we finally get to spend more time with the kids. And it doesn't take them long to take a particular liking to Taylor. I'm not sure right now. They're just interested in my hair being very long. Because <laughs> all the people here, for the most part, have short, short hair. It's not common to have long hair. <laughs> the reason most people around here are shaved is because of lice. Rather than deal with it on a daily basis, most people choose to eliminate the problem altogether with the easiest way they know how. <laughs> you say a baby goat? <laughs> I should tickle you for that. <laughs> tickle you back. You better be careful. I'll get you all. You better believe it. <laughs> yep, just like that, we were accepted into the pack. And it doesn't take long before we're introduced to one of the biggest cultural aspects of Uganda, dancing. Even Jonathan has become one with the beat. And it must be contagious because once one person starts dancing, everyone joins in. We've been officially informed by Daniel that Americans don't know how to dance. Quite frankly, I'd agree with him, hence the reason I'm holding the camera. Thanks to UOCC, almost each one of these kids has a sponsor that helps them afford things like housing here at UOCC, school fees, and food. And one thing these kids love to do is write letters back home to their sponsors. And that's just the thing that sets UOCC apart. People that donate to UOCC just aren't putting money into a mysterious fund or a CEO's pocket, but instead they are directly impacting each and every one of these kids' lives in a personal way. And if that's something that's interesting to you, I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description below where you can join in on the fun as well. We've now been in Uganda for about seven days. In that time, we've seen and done a lot of things, but our team is not yet all together. That is, until today. Four more members flew in last night to join our team. 
And now that we're all together, we're ready for whatever awaits us. The team members that we have on this team, um, I'm very excited about because it's such a diverse group. We have people that have been here multiple times. We have uh, people from all over the United States. One, one young lady is from Maine. My first impressions with Uganda and Ugandans is definitely different. They're, they have a kindness to them. I'm here because uh, several years ago, for some reason, God put the word orphanages inside my head. Well, I saw the Facebook links on about UOCC, and it looked really interesting today. And I was like, oh, that would be something really interesting to experience and to, yeah, to do. Why am I on this trip? That is a big question for me. I know I'm going to learn a lot about a different culture. So I've been um, fascinated with Africa since I was a kid, and it's amazing to, to be here. The service team here is great. They're made of a bunch of different kinds of people. I think part of the excitement of this, uh, having this service team is just seeing like what is kind of intangible to an extent become a reality for them. So now they're, they've seen us doing these things for so many years and now they get to come and walk in it. Bringing them together to see how they're gonna work together is um, just an exciting project. I am here because I love people. Basically to make the most of the, that I will make the most of my time. My first impressions of Uganda, uh, they're kind of kind of hard to, to, uh, 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 to explain. Uh, it's amazing to walk down also the, the tourist market and hug people because we've made friends with them and they're excited to see us. Oh, the landscape here is beautiful. It's tropical. Definitely more tropical than anything that we have in the United States. My my goal is just to, to serve and to be a, a loving example. I want to share the love of Christ with the kids. I expect to see God move in a lot of ways. I expect to see my kiddos and see my, my siblings. I'm very excited about that. They're very athletic. They're smart. They're really kind. Being there in person really shows how much work um, has gone into building it from the ground up. I don't think that you can fully understand what it's like here until you've been here. You can hear the stories, you can um, you know, participate in, in fundraising and all of that, but once you've been here, you're like immersed into the culture, into the, the community, into the needs and the, the struggles that they have, and also into the joy that, that they have even with when they're living in lack. So with our team finally all together, we set out with our first priority of finding food. Again, traveling makes you hungry. After that, it was time to take a trip to the local tourist strip. Word on the street is that there's a local painter here that's pretty talented. I really like it. <laughs> I'm buying the Jaguar, so tell Taylor I saw it first. <laughs> I'm telling her. Tay. It happens to be my favorite creature, too. Since Tammy is now the proud new owner of this painting, Taylor will just have to get dibs on the next one. Thank you. This is real art. It's not like the modern art stuff that we usually see, you know, the street painters back home. These are really nice. This is talent. Oh, we're being left behind. Oh, yep, you better catch up. Once we had sufficiently depleted our wallets, it was time to introduce our newest team members to the orphanage. Yeah, it's basically like this every time we come here. It's like it's the first time every time, but the kids love it. Looking back, I think Jennifer took it rather personally when we were told Americans can't dance. Because she challenged them the only way an American knows how, by dancing the Macarena. Man, I hate this song. However, thanks to the mighty power of music licensing, I don't have to force you to listen to it. Thankfully, but not soon enough, Chris shows up and crashes the party. And if you couldn't tell, he's got a little bit of a reputation with these kids.
So we're going to um, the district of Namayingo, and inside of that district is the town or village of Maguli. So in Maguli, they don't have really any services out there. Um, they have a hard time getting water, like clean water to drink, so they usually go out and fetch it from some like spring that comes up that they share with animals. And so they do have a water collection tank, but it hasn't rained in two months, so they're out of clean water right now. So we're going to just love on some people, and I think they have a little presentation for us when we get there. The kids are excited. Everybody's very excited. They don't get a whole lot of visitors out there. So, yeah. Before we head to the village, we first have to meet up with some new friends that are going to join us on this trip. So this is my friend Jackson. Oh. <laughs> and what do you do at Soul Hope? Yes, uh, I'm Jackson Olobo and I work with Soul Hope as the monitoring evaluation and research learning manager. And uh, yes, I support to track the different processes and activities that we keep doing so that we, we can capture the different impacts that we are doing through different success stories that we are, uh, you know, uh, yeah, so through that we're reaching out to the different vulnerable communities and it's amazing, it's really amazing that the work we're doing, yes, there could be small blocks, but it's contributing a lot. Thank you. So we'd like to work in partnership with Soul Hope whenever we can. And this is Enoch. Yeah. You want to share what you do at Soul Hope? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm Enoch Kwagala. I'm a registered nurse, a senior nursing officer at Soul Hope and we hope treat the jiggers from people's feet and I've served with Soho for close to six years. It's been an amazing journey working with Soho. If you've never heard of a jigger, think of what we're used to here in America with chiggers, but worse, a lot worse. Organizations like Soul Hope do a lot of good in these remote villages, providing shoes and medical care to the children that face challenges living in the furthest reaches of Uganda. While the Maguli village we are going to doesn't suffer from jiggers, we will later be visiting a place that does in the further episode. To give you an idea of where the Maguli village is, we are traveling east just a few miles short of the border to Kenya and just slightly north of Lake Victoria. The school you are seeing is under the organization. We give support to all your children who lost their parents. Others lost their parents, one, others two. Others are just vulnerable. They have parents, but they're vulnerable. So the school we have from nursery up to P4. So this is the school. The school is called Magori Children's Education Center. It's found in Namayingo district. A place is very far from Kampala. Sometimes when we talk about Magori, you may think twice, where is my goal? So this is the place, feel free, you are most welcome. So we're gonna move around, we show you what we so far we have done and what we are planning to do. So here we have our water tank that we constructed. Our school started in 2018. I remember when Jennifer came, I said, I'm so happy that she has come back when we have constructed the building. She came the first time when they came with Wendy and Dan, we had not looked at class. It was on beam level. So when she came, she brought blessings. So we are most welcome. We are really happy that we have come back again to Magoy Children Education Center. Thank you for loving the community. Thank you for loving the children. We really appreciate it. So this is the water tank which we constructed. Unfortunately, we depend on rainwater. We have taken a period of like two months with that rain. Right now, it's empty. It's quite empty. And right now, again, we have resorted to using water from the ponds because now it's dry, as you are seeing. The water which was there because of the population and because the community members want clean water, they also come and share with the children. So now the water, all the tanks are empty. So right now we are using water from the lake, as you are going to see in the Jerichans are there, and where we get water from the ponds. So that's the water, it's empty. It has taken like three weeks without water. So inside, as we are entering, this is a baby class. So
So this is our pre-primary class from the age three to four years. Yeah, it's all that we have removed the benches because they are used in the dining hall. So this is a baby class, a pre-primary class. So make sure that in that environment is good. The children can be able to learn. Even though the teacher is not there, they are able to learn from the school, from the class. Yes. Um, in Uganda, it is a leg. So you see the whole thing is a leg. <laughs> That is how it is. The hand is a full hand. So there are fingers here. Okay, that's better. So, yeah. so this is our second tank that I was talking about. It's also empty. Because now we have taken three weeks without rain. So right now we don't have clean water. Because now the two tanks are empty. Okay. Yes, so that was the planning. If we can have a borehole. Because now this is the water that cleans the latrines. That's the water that cleans glasses and even utensils. So planning, if we can have a borehole around or another water tank, it can help. Because right now, the community and the, the school, we are only depending on the two tanks. Yeah. Yes. And so the water that you can tap into the borehole, it's not clean water? Yeah, right now, in the community, we have a challenge that the boreholes, when they drill borehole, the water is salty. But I think when we happen to get engineers, and I think they can be able to, to find out whether the water is salty or it's safe. Yeah. Yes. And when they do the testing, they can help us. Because right now, our children are suffering. When you go inside, actually had like five children who are sick because of the water. And we shall be able to move from here, look at the water where our children are getting water from. And this time again. What kind of illnesses can they get when uh, they're drinking water that's not good? Like the water from the ponds? What kind of sickness? That is diarrhea. Okay. Yeah, diarrhea, typhoid. Okay. Yeah. And even right now there is cholera. Cholera. Right now in the mine we have cholera. Yeah. Yes. So we just have to be careful. And so in the mine we have cholera outbreak in the mine, but not here. So in other places. But now our family, our community members, they go to those communities to transact business. They come back this way. So right now there's an outbreak because of the water. Yeah. So we are also worried that you never know it can come to our community. Right. Because we are getting water from the lake. Actually, we have just brought water. Yes, and now boiling water for 300 children becomes so tiresome. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of firewood. Mm -hmm. So we buy today a rolly for the firewood is finished. Yes, find now there is delay in preparation for food because you want to make uh, boil water for the kids. So wow. we want to go also and check on the, the dining and then the kitchen. Okay. After we toured the school in traditional Ugandan fashion, we were treated to lunch. Although over the past few days, some of us noticed that the local food wasn't sitting in agreement with us entirely, some of us decided to sit this one out. Well, some of us except for Jonathan. This kid will eat just about anything. So, hey, Jonathan, tell us how it is. <laughs> a piece of beef I got. I'll just like both that. Yeah. Quite good, still pretty good. Yeah. This rice is really good. Yeah. This is beef. Uh, beef stew and um, rice, pilau rice. Pilau? Yeah, pilau rice. So it's very delicious. When you're eating with your natural fork, this is what you do to the rice. You get it like this, drop your hand, press it hard, then pick the whole thing. With lunch out of the way, it was time to get down to some business. While options are being explored to get clean water to villages like this one, it's not something that can be done overnight. But we do what we can to help these people while we're here. So we'll be hanging mosquito nets for some of the locals to help fight against malaria. Can you dust the macarena with that on your head? <laughs> no, 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 no. You can. And scissors. <laughs> and a water bottle. And you got to get the tent. And a bag <laughs> It's one thing to note just how far these villages are from anything. But you know you're deep in the heart of Africa when the only way to get to some of these places is to walk in. As we make our way further into the village, we're shown where the locals here source their water. So this is the water source. It's very open. So when it rains, or 
the microorganisms are there. So when they came, you just drink like that. So right now, this is the water source which we are using. So after drawing water, you come and you get a drop of chlorine. Yeah. After you boil it? No, you don't boil. Just get from here. Yes, you get a drop of chlorine. Then you leave it to set for 30 minutes. 30 minutes? 30. Okay. And then you can drink. And that's effective? Yeah, effective. But it also has some side effects because you can't continue using chlorine then after day. So. So if this one dries up, we have to go to the lake. The lake is how far? Very far, five to six kilometers. Without actually being there, it can often be hard to understand what the needs of other people are halfway around the world. It's why trips like these are important. You get to meet the people, understand the culture, and only then do you begin to understand what needs to be done. But the first step in helping those people is to just show up. It means the world to these people that someone from halfway around the world came all the way over just to see them, and it gives them hope for a better future. Graceful. We actually did some good. I know. Yes. We've been here for a long time and only a little bit <laughs> Yes, although just the presence is something. I know. Like just listening to them say, visit her, thank you for coming, we received you. That, just that, you know, that's, that's enough for them, that's enough for me. So. Yes. <laughs> Hope, what do you think so far? You have a camera. At I do. So that means <laughs> all was, thought processes that I had <laughs> out the window. I had a whole, whole book going on here. Like, yeah. It was like da da da. And then you ask me with that right there, which I mean, it's great. But it went boop and it's gone. <laughs> okay, well, just mouth words and we'll add it in later. There we go. <laughs> there you go. So from this, it has to look like that. Wow. Yeah. So how long? So, um, yeah, you can try. So what happens is you have to blow it if you don't have wind. So she does. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's, there. it's here. It's right here. It's okay. To me, the best part about being here is getting to see and understand how others live. It creates a new perspective and gives us an understanding of one another that we didn't previously have. And it's not a bad thing to have a little fun along the way. Aunt Kim, Aunt Kim hi. Do, you, do, do you take Daniel as your lovely husband? <laughs> I was like, I was like, I so feel I like a veil. So I unveil you. <laughs> All I can think of is I feel like I have a veil on. Hi, <laughs> 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 
But that camera's like five feet anywhere near in your vicinity, your vocabulary just totally. You no, know, that's on a daily basis. As soon as my brain registers possibly something where someone takes a little bit more than regular conversation interest, or it just goes, Poop, it's gone. So, really. You're doing pretty good right now. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm really here. hard. <laughs> That's why I was like, okay, yeah, eye contact right here, focusing okay. right here. But now you mentioned it. Hello. Let's find the corners. <laughs> I don't really like doing this. Okay, I don't know what I look like. Right into now, work and helping make other people's lives easier. Just being a servant. In my hands, dirty. Okay. <laughs> We've spent pretty much all day here in the village. We set up a good number of mosquito nets for the locals, and as we make our way back, Dorothy pulls us aside to show us one of Uganda's unique treasures the coffee bean. The ripe oh. one is here, it turns to this color. Then from this color, it comes to black, but they pick it when it is red to harvest it. Then they dry it and it becomes black. Then they take to the factory, they process coffee. Yeah. Okay. So this, yeah, see some of these that have holes, I would say no, because something got in them, right? Right. Oh, see, look. Or that, they all have holes? I don't know. This one looks okay. I popped it in my mouth last time I got one. I didn't even think about it. Yep, see? There's the coffee bean in there. That's what it looks like. There's a green coffee bean in it. I don't see any maggots. <laughs> so I think you can eat it. Pick it up, it's kind of slippery. Yeah. You eat the berry also. Oh, and the berry? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The whole yeah, because one's okay. coffee and one's the berry. Oh. Ah, okay. Yeah. It's good. It's good? It's good. It tastes like coffee. No. Do you take oh. it out of the pot first? Just eat the whole thing, but make sure it doesn't have something, um, you know, like an oh. I felt like I've tasted this before, but I don't know what it is. It's a little... Like coffee? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not really coffee. It's it's a little bitter. These dry ones are like... A but not bad. But oh. they are... I don't really know how to describe it. it tastes like grass. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. You take, do you this one's okay. Does somebody want to try it? <laughs> no. no. I if I, you try also these ones. Okay. So these ones are ready for roasting? Yes. Okay. What do you think? And Aaron said it tastes too good. Yeah, it's not bad. The berry, the berry is sweet, right? Yeah, the berry yeah, is sweet. This is sweet. This is what you're oh, supposed that's... to be eating. I know, I know. And the seed. Oh, okay, seed both. The coffee, all together. The berry, like, all together. It's a whole <laughs> package. Well, no, good you know. job. That's okay. Do. <laughs> that was on accident. I lick didn't it, need to lick do it, that. Lick it, lick Here, it, lick it off the That's floor. a possibility. <laughs> the rest what? of them, I think. Oh, I thought that was a wor worm sticking his head out. Right. <laughs> Who's that? Hi, oh, guys. <laughs> guys. <laughs> Let's go. We're taking our right. time over here. <laughs> Let's go. We know where the bus is. <laughs> they can't live without us, right? Right. Right? I'm going to give them a whole sheet. <laughs> All right. Wait, it's okay to eat a black one, right? I think so. Well, you take okay. that and you share. Oh. You can share. It. Now we got to catch up with the rest of the team because I think they're trying to leave without us. Yes, we're lagging. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm like, what are they doing? Coffee. Coffee. Americans love coffee. <laughs> and when we arrive back at the school, the guys at Soho gear up to hand out shoes to the kids, and they are nothing more than excited to see us once again. As it turns out, they really, really love stickers. And for some reason, Jennifer decides to break out into Macarena again. And before you know it, it spreads around like a disease. With a full productive day behind us, we say our goodbyes to the village of Maguli. We thank Joseph for showing us around both the village and the school, and we loaded up back in the van. But on our drive out of the village, something interesting begins to happen. Something that hasn't happened here for a very long time. It begins to rain. 
And later the next day, we found out that it actually rained well into the night in the village. And while that little bit of rain might not solve all of their problems, it was enough for the people of Maguli to consider our visit a blessing and give them hope. <laughs>